As you learned in Module 2, legislation generally deals with what powers you have, whereas governance deals with the manner in which that power is exercised. Board members are expected to govern themselves and staff according to a number of basic principles outlined in this module. Integrity. The Code of Conduct sets very high standards of conduct for how you carry out your duties on the board. It contains specific rules, such as not accepting gifts in connection to your duties. The Code of Conduct also says that you cannot use your position as a member of the board to improperly influence decisions. If you ever have any questions about how the Code of Conduct applies to you, you can contact the City of Toronto's Integrity Commissioner. Fiduciary Duty Board members are expected to act at all times for the sole benefit and interest of the BIA and the City. They must exercise the degree of care, diligence and skill that a reasonable and prudent person would exercise in comparable circumstances. They must also exercise powers and discharge duties with sincere and honest intentions, often referred to as acting in good faith. From a legal perspective, your fiduciary duty may be held to a higher standard, depending on your expertise. For example, an accountant on your board will be held to a higher standard in terms of accounting decisions made by the board. Courts may rule that the accountant should have known better and advised the board accordingly. Decorum. It is understood that there will be differences of opinion around the board table, and this is healthy. However, the City Code of Conduct requires that debate be conducted in a dignified and civil manner. This means board members must treat one another with respect, refrain from using unparliamentary language, treat one another, BIA staff, and the public without abuse, bullying, or intimidation, and ensure the work environment is free from discrimination. Transparency. Under the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, the records of the BIA are accessible to any member of the general public. There are some narrow exceptions, for example, personal or confidential information is protected. In general, though, records of the BIA can be requested by anyone through a request to the BIA, our office, or the City Clerk's Corporate Access and Privacy Office. Conflict of Interest Any instance where a member has a monetary interest in a matter, either directly or indirectly, is a conflict of interest. The monetary interest of a family member is also considered to be a conflict of interest. Declarations of conflict of interest must be made at the beginning of every meeting. Board members have a responsibility to review the meeting agenda and declare any actual, potential, or perceived conflicts. The conflict and nature of the conflict should be recorded in the minutes, and the member should remove him or herself from the meeting while the item is being considered. The member shall not attempt in any way before, during, or after the meeting to influence the voting on the matter. A simple example of a conflict of interest is if a board member owns a print shop and wants to bid on a BIA print job, the board member is permitted to put in the bid but must declare a conflict and remove themselves from the decision making. Confidentiality. The Code of Conduct requires members to protect confidential information that they acquire in the course of their duties. No member may use confidential information for personal or private gain or for the gain of relatives or any person or corporation. Members should not access or attempt to gain access to confidential information unless necessary for the performance of their duties. To provide an example, the BIA membership list must be treated as confidential and can only be used for the purpose it was collected, usually communicating with members. This list cannot be provided to outside parties or used for any other purpose. Nonpartisanship. Although BIAs are empowered to advocate for their members, they are city boards managing public funds and cannot provide support to political candidates or political parties. This includes using the services of people employed by the BIA or any BIA resources for election-related purposes. BIAs and individual board members cannot endorse candidates. Although it is not advisable, board members may endorse a candidate as an individual but not on the pretense of a BIA endorsement. Board members who seek elected office must take a leave of absence according to the city's public appointments policy. Democracy. BIAs function as a democracy. The board is accountable to its membership. The membership appoints a new board every four years and approves the budget annually. Thus, the board has a duty to consult, inform, and act on behalf of their members.
If you are aware of a misconduct or perceived misconduct related to the BIA, the first course of action is to report it to the Chair. If the matter is not addressed to your satisfaction, the next step is to report it to the City's BIA office. If you are still unsatisfied, there are four accountability officers employed by the City who may be called upon to intervene. The Integrity Commissioner is responsible for providing advice and resolving complaints related to the Code of Conduct. The Integrity Commissioner also educates councillors and members of local boards about the City's codes of conduct, bylaws, policies and legislation that govern ethical behaviour. You can also contact the Integrity Commissioner to seek confidential advice about your own conduct. The Lobbyist Registrar is responsible for promoting and enhancing the integrity of the City's decision making through public disclosure of lobbying activities and regulation of lobbyists' conduct. BIA board members are public office holders under the terms of the lobbying bylaw. Therefore, anyone attempting to influence a board member's decision outside of a public meeting must register this activity to the lobbyist registrar. The principle of the lobbying bylaw is that while lobbying public office holders is a common and legitimate activity, the public is entitled to know who is attempting to influence city government. The Auditor General ensures accountability for the quality of stewardship over public funds and for the achievement of value for money in city operations. The AG has the independent authority to review city operations and also oversees the fraud and waste hotline. The Ombudsman is responsible for addressing concerns about city services and investigating complaints about administrative unfairness. The Ombudsman's office is a place of last resort for individuals who have tried to resolve a given problem with the respective city division. As public office holders, BIA board members are expected to uphold the principles of good governance which are in place to give the public confidence in our public institutions.